Yeah, now the red light. There we go. All right. Good evening. We call to order the Zoning Board of Appeals for the City of East Hampton. Today is August 28, 2019. Uh, we will. Do we have any old business, new business? Anybody wants to speak to the public? There's nobody in the room. It's a good day. Okay. Our first hearing is Patrick O'Neill seeking a special permit and/or variance to modify extend a pre-existing non-conforming single-family structure in accordance with section 11.12 and 13.1 of the East Hampton Zoning Ordinance subject properties located 1 Apple Tree Lane and zoned residential rural BR40. Okay, Mr. O'Neill, what would you like to do? Uh, so my house as it stands now, um, got married a couple of years ago, baby on the way due December 7th, so I'm on a... Yeah, you're on a tear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so what I'd like to do, the, the big project is an addition off the back of the house. Mm -hmm. um, so the addition uh, will measure about 26 feet wide and 20 feet deep off of the back. Okay. Um, and that would involve, you know, some inside work, shifting our kitchen from one side of the house to the other. The plans change ever so slightly, but the setbacks are all no, nothing more um, encroaching than what was originally. I don't think I did. Copy of this. I, I, I have okay. printed it off. Yep. Um, so, yeah, that's you can see on the second page there the, the new addition, the new great room off the back. So, that'll be a great room, family room, you know, slash. Uh, informal dining room mm -hmm. and then you'll see the kitchen there which you know instead of the the full galley kitchen it'll actually, it'll actually be an island in there but that's just the side work mm -hmm. um, and then the other which is uh, far less priority right now with my compressed timeline uh, is the covered front porch so my wife has this very idealistic vision of sitting on the front porch and watching the, the kids ride their bikes in the street mm -hmm. <laughs> so yes we understand well yep Okay. So, and then what brought this into question is you can see, um, which I believe is my southwest corner of my house currently. Yep. Um, as it stands now, is approximately, if you look on the, this, the plot plan on page four, approximately 11 feet away from the property line. Um, the new addition corner will remain that 11 feet. We're not going to go any closer to the property line uh, than my house currently is. Okay. Um, and then if we go to the front porch, currently my house, the setback from the street is 28 feet. We're looking at six feet wide for the front porch, which would bring that section of, of the porch to a setback of 22 feet from the street. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is the great room replacing? Um, the field car looks like it says patio, but the picture looks like a roof. Yep, so there's there's a slight, um, there's like a two foot cantilever on the back side of my house. So essentially the second floor overhangs the exterior wall of the first floor by two feet. And then I have a concrete poured patio that was probably built with the house in 96 or 97. Um, that's probably, I want to say 10 feet, maybe 12 feet by 25 feet. In that no, it's 10 by... 2036. Okay, yes, that, that sounds about right. What if it, so there is no roof on this? Nope, there's no roof at all. It's just patio. That's it's just concrete patio. patio. Because the I picture. Have a, I have a freestanding gazebo on the deck behind the garage. Oh, okay, that's, that's the roof on this. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yep. All right. That's just freestanding, just a couple of bolts to keep it from blowing away. Because it's sort of a big addition, um, considering the size of the lot. And I don't know if I have a problem with the family room because you're not extending further into the side yard, but the front porch, I mean, that's a big addition non-conforming. That would need a variance. That's not, a, to me, a special permit item because you're not in, you know, if you're set back, what's the setback supposed to be in the zone? 50 feet. If your house was built today, it would have to be 50 feet back. Yeah. And if you came in to add a six-foot porch on the front, would say that needed a variance. Right. And there's no hardship for the front porch. Well, can, some, can you help me understand what, the, what a variance means? You're asking to vary the rules. Okay. And 
to get a variance, you have to prove a hardship, which means that your property is different than everybody else's. And because your property is different, you can't comply with rules. I mean, that's the real legalistic standard. Okay. And we don't always hold people to that standard, yeah. but. but it should be harder to yeah, get. Yeah, it should be harder to get. And, and to me, the, po the front porch is clearly a variance item, not a special permit item. Yeah, well, I think that's why the application was written with basically either two. And I don't think it's a hard special that's, permit or variance. Yeah. So, so I think we should address these as two separate things. Okay. Okay. Um, the first one we're going to address is going to be the rear addition that you're looking to do. Okay. Correct. So, um, about what three years ago, four years ago, they they changed the rule or we we changed the one of the laws or the zoning where basically. If if you wanted to, you have a pre-existing non-conforming lot or structure on a lot. Right. Um, in order to make a modification that is is beyond what is allowed by the by the setbacks, mm -hmm. but does not exceed, does not create any additional setback mm -hmm. encroachment. Yep. If that makes any sense. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you just have to come and you we have to say. Yeah, okay, so you're 11 feet off the side yard. You're not going to be more than 11, you're not going to be less than 11 feet off the side yard. Correct. So basically, this, this line of side yard setback mm -hmm. is, is remaining the same. Exactly. So there's no variation, variance required. So, so this is basically a, a simple special permit granting of yes, you can build the rear addition without any additional. That's for setbacks, but also he has problems right. with building coverage and impervious surface. Well, so then my question is on those is, does the, the building lot coverage and the maximum impervious coverage, does that include the front porch? So building coverage is just anything that's walls and a roof um, so it would be garage, the main structure, sheds, um, things like that. The front porch uh, is a roof. Front porch would be would be a building coverage. Impervious surface includes things like driveways, walkways, patios, um, mm -hmm. swimming pools, decks, any anything that covers the ground, regardless of whether or not it has a roof. So which is why the impervious okay. surface is at fifteen percent. And the lock, the building coverage is at ten percent because of the patio. The yeah, or, or like driveway. The driveway other wouldn't count as building lock easy. coverage, right. right? Okay. Now back to my question: Is the the calculations that you've done here of the one thousand five hundred fifty-two square feet of maximum building coverage and the two thousand seven hundred fifty feet of uh, impervious surface, does that include the front porch? Or does that, um, that doesn't so the, 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 the numbers that I put in there were based off of the assessor's field card so that the current 1552 was the garage house and what is the covered patio in the back um, currently this current, is current, 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 the gazebo, the gazebo, the covered this gazebo is in the back okay um, the uh, 2750 for the impervious surface is basically everything that's shown okay. on the aerial photograph but neither includes the proposals that's just ex that's that just what my question and the is. great room looks like it's about 520 square feet mm -hmm. yeah, 26 by 20. Yeah. so that comes out to um, 2072 square feet building coverage um, without the front porch 2072 it's present. Oh, 150, 1552 plus, plus, plus the, the, the and so that comes out to 2072 and but I think um, use my house garage and porch and that doesn't include the front porch so but the, this, this the, the porch is that's a is, is, it's, that it shouldn't be, it's not the porch it's the gazebo yeah, the right. gazebo, and yeah. But not the, the cement sidewalk off my back of the house. That's For included the, in this next number, the 2750. Right, so the building coverage is anything that has walls and a roof. Okay. Um, the impervious surface is anything that's built, anything that's on your lot, whether or not it's 
a building or a structure. So should the gazebo then be removed from this max building coverage of lot because there is no walls? No, because it, no, it has a roof. Okay. It's it's a roof supported roof by four walls. So yeah. Something. Yeah. Okay. So if there wasn't if there wasn't a roof on the gazebo, it would just be a porch. Yeah, that makes sense. And then it wouldn't be okay. it yeah. wouldn't contribute to a deck, it wouldn't go to the lot. We could look in the definitions and see if gazebos are excluded or not. It was hard to tell from the aerial photograph what okay. was going on in that property, on, on that part of the property. So yeah. um, big trees. So With just the great room addition and no front porch building coverage, proposed building coverage comes out to 11.3%. So that's quite a bit over 8.4. Yeah, but it, well, yeah. 10% is, but it's, is the max. Not right. quite a bit over the 10% right. allowed. Right. That's, that's, that's what we're really, that's what we're looking at is the allowed. Okay. Building coverage, building carry out. Gazebos are <laughs> so, Garden center, greenhouse, or nursery, but we do not have gazebo. So if you look under uh, building coverage of a lot, um, somewhere in here, there's maybe it's under building a structure enclosed within. Oh, here we go. See structure. A structure enclosed within exteriors walls or firewalls built, erected, and framed of a combination of any materials, whether portable or fixed. So there we go. A gazebo is quote-unquote portable. Mm -hmm. What? How big is the gazebo? Uh, it's on 12 the, by 14. It's on the field card. Oh, okay. Well, the field card, so when I bought the house originally, they had a hot tub on that back deck. So the back deck on behind the garage is on the field card. It was a completely covered structure, like almost like a three-season vinyl thing. Mm -hmm. It was foreclosed houses, and they care of all the vinyl fell in. It was like an aluminum vinyl structure. So ripped that out, and it was just a deck for, call it eight years, and then I bought a gazebo and put the gazebo on it. Okay. So what it was, uh, on the field card, it looks like it's actually part of my house, mm -hmm. like an actual enclosed structure. I re completely demolished the enclosed structure. There was a deck for a long time, and now there's just a busy go on. See, I don't, I don't see, I, see, that's why, this is right. a, this, this, this is a deck. Yeah, this is a deck with a gazebo. But on. it doesn't indicate a gazebo on it. Yes, I'm because here. when the field card was done, it, it was done as the, as like a, a fully enclosed structure. No, if you look over here, it's just considered living area zero. Okay. It's a deck. Yep. All without right. a roof. That's how it's assessed. There's no right. And so, but so when I looked at the right. aerial, when I looked okay. at the aerial photograph and I saw a peaked roof on it, yeah. Then, That's when then you... I then I said, okay, well then it's got a roof, so that counts right. for its building coverage of the lot. Yeah. So so if, so if if you all decide that that doesn't count towards building coverage, or it does count to building coverage, that's your. Right. I think I think that's your interpretation to whether or not that counts. The whether or not that's for what counts the building coverage of the lot, or whether it doesn't. The the current structure is roughly 24 inch, 24 feet deep, 60 feet long, which is 1,440 square feet, including the garage, right? So including the garage. Yep. Okay. So for maximum building coverage of lot, if we take the 20, 1,440, and you're looking to add. Uh, 520 square feet, right? Mm -hmm. So plus 50, 520. Oops. That's 1960. And you're allowed 1830. You're 7% over. 7%? 0.7. 0.7. Yeah. So, so, so the building coverage is at 10.7 percent. 10.07. 10.07. Or 10.7. 10.7. Yeah, Sorry, I misplaced my decimal point. 
better excel. I can't do all this stuff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's with taking the gazebo off. And that's what that's with the gazebo. I like that better. And the oh, okay. Just to clarify, the gazebo doesn't have walls. Correct. Because um, right. I, when I read the building structure, I, I read that as requiring walls. Um, the structure enclosed within exteriors, walls or firewalls, built, erected, and framed. Um, and I know the portable are fixed, but it seems, I don't know, that's what, that, that was my first read on it, would be yeah, that it requires walls rather than right. saying. All right. Or post. Or right. Post. Yeah. That happens yeah. to have a roof on it. Um, okay. So I've always thought of it the way Jamie does a roof, you know, Structure. over something. It doesn't have to walls to be posted. Within. Exterior. Form a structure for a shelter, persons, animals, or property. So, so why would the words walls or firewalls be in there if they're not required? True. They would serve no purpose. In so, would let's for for simple argument's sake, if there was a existing front porch on this house, would you count it? If it had walls. But if it just has posts, it doesn't count. That's a good, uh, good question. <laughs> yeah, I'm, just, uh, I'm playing yeah, devil's advocate here, yeah, but uh, uh, I'm. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. You know. I think it's a building. Yeah, I mean, I, I just. Building coverage, because the rain can't. That's well, what we But that's, that's it. It, there's a maximum building coverage of lot and maximum pervious service. Right, but still, I think even if there were no driveways, you cover a, a lot with a building, you, no parking lot, anything, you still have a problem with rainwater because it has a roof. If you have a pavilion, a big right. pavilion, so that's why I think we regulate both. Mm -hmm. Right. See, structure. Let's see what it says for structure. It doesn't help. Structure does not help. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are just rays of sunshine here, aren't you? <laughs> materials assembled at a fixed location to give support or shelter such as a building bridge trestle tower framework retaining wall the uh, tunnel stadium reviewing stand platform bin fence but do, 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 do. okay that doesn't help as much so deck and porch and all those fun things that people build are not defined Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Building. If you read down further in the definition, for the purpose of this definition, roof shall include an awning or any similar covering, whether or not permanent in nature. The word building shall be construed where the context requires as though followed by the words or part or parts thereof. So then thereby the front porch would be part of the structure. Part of the building. Yeah, part of the building. The building. Okay. And the gazebo also. Okay. So we have to decide whether in and so if we don't include the gazebo, we're at ten point seven percent. If we include the gazebo, so the fourteen forty plus 520 plus the gazebo is uh, 12 by 14 I believe 12 by 14 so we'll call that 170 square feet for simple math it's pretty close 168 square feet plus 168 who needs Excel <laughs> <laughs> okay divided by 8 1830, if I could use my fat fingers here, that is 11.6% of maximum building coverage of the 10%. Mm -hmm. well, either way, we're over. Either way, we're over. So. 
So, should we go to the uh, non conforming section and see what it says about altering? But it's how how it's about that? it's conforming now? Right, but if, if we go over, if we go over, either way, at, including the gazebo or not, we're still over the ten percent max. Um, Gazebos aren't average. designed to last forever. Most of them, they're correct. This one's definitely past its half life. I I don't know if I'd have a problem if we approved the family room with a condition that the gazebo, when it dies, cannot be replaced. There we go. So because it's not, not permanent. Permanent, permanent. Right. Technically, it's not even a permitted structure. Because, or was it 100 square feet? Wouldn't we? But it's attached to the building. No, no, the gazebo. Oh, the gazebo is freestanding. The gazebo is freestanding. Standing on the deck. The deck is attached to the building. Yes. The deck is attached. It, it's attached but to the backside of the garage. Yeah. But if the gazebo is just gazebo sitting there. Well, so you don't need a movable structure. Regardless of whether or not you need a building permit to, to construct it. It still has to follow zoning. Yeah. Sure. It just there's no building permit necessary. Right. So it doesn't have the it doesn't necessarily have the building commissioner's stamp on it. Work with me here. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I I would I'd stay with you know approve the addition before okay. the gazebo dies. Uh -huh. okay. It can't be when replaced. The gazebo passes. <laughs> It goes to Never Neverland. <laughs> so then that brings up the next issue of the impervious surface area. Yeah, and if we're going to approve it, we have to grant the variance or a special permit for that too. Correct. Well, I'm, 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 I'm basically, like I said, I'm dealing with the backyard first. Yeah, yeah. I like that idea. Okay, I'm not because with the front that, that's, that's the more important <laughs> one, I think. You know, for for where <laughs> yeah, for, where, <laughs> for where you are for in life sure. right now, I think the, the, <laughs> I the addition on the back of the house is a way way more important thing. Yes. Okay, so the impervious lot currently you are five square feet over on impervious area, and where, that, where did you get five square feet? Well, it says approximately zero square feet. No. I, yeah, well, yeah, it, the allowable is 2,745 and yeah. he's at 2,000. Oh, I, I, was, yeah. I just looked at things. And, and, and that was okay. measuring off an aerial photograph which is at like 200 feet from the air. So <laughs> there's going to be some yeah. wiggle room. That's why it says approximately zero. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty close. Yeah. Um, well, if we. If we use, does your does your driveway extend out as two lanes all the way to the street? Yes. Okay. So, so if we do 28 by 24. Can I just, so the impervious surface is an easier one to get around um, because under that uh, section, the aquifer overlay, it says um, rendering, it, rendering by more than 15, rendering more than 15% of the lot impervious um, is not allowed unless you put in stormwater best management practices to handle all the extra stormwater on the site. And who reviews so, that? So he's due to a SWIP? No, so we'd have okay. to put in, because for like 600 rain square barrels? feet, yeah, so rain barrels or oh. rain garden, basically whatever new addition, yeah, whatever yeah. new addition you add, has you, direct, to you direct the, the downspouts right. to a rain garden or mm. a, a rain barrel so that the water does not leave the property. Right. You know, I and, appreciate that. They're going to come back looking like a hero here. <laughs> so, so, the, the, so that's an easy one to yeah. condition that right. yeah. the. That would satisfy. That, that, and then I put in the technical note a proposed conditions the last line. Yep. But, yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. They yeah. must implement stormwater best management practices to deal with that extra stormwater runoff. Okay. That would be the easiest way, yeah. in my opinion, to. Right. We don't have to like <laughs> do numbers or anything. It's like. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> Come on, I was going to open up. I know you were. We're all going to sit here going. <laughs> okay. So, so in order to 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 get by the 15% maximum impervious surface area, 
we're going to do some uh, best management practices by way of rain barrel and rain. I like rain gardens better rain than gardens. rain barrels. Okay. That sounds great. Okay. So that is the special permit portion of our show. <laughs> Would you like to hold or would you like to go for what's behind door number two? Let's go for door number two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The front porch. Mm -hmm. You are looking to go out approximately eight feet. Six. Six, so six feet. Six. Okay. Six by 20. So 120 more square feet. And dramatically decrease your front yard. Uh, so right now, if you look at that picture uh, that you have, uh, yeah, there you go. So that picture was taken probably 2006, maybe, because I got rid of those bushes. It was moved in. But there is a concrete walkway after these stairs to the driveway. Yes. So that may or may not already be included in the impervious surface coverage. Mm -hmm. um, so for counting this 120 square feet as impervious surface coverage, there's already a decent chunk of it in there. So maybe the incremental impervious surface coverage, my guess would probably be somewhere be between 40 and 50 square feet. I'm not as much yeah, concerned about the impervious surface okay. as the building the set, setback. The setback is yeah. Because that's clearly, to me, requires a variance, not a special permit. And Aesthetically, I'm sure it would look very nice, but yeah. there's no hardship. That's where we run into the challenge, mm -hmm. is that how can you... Make, is it, you know, so hardship defined as... In, in the land, which means you, you can't comply with regulations. Because there's, um, I don't know about how a front porch would have a hardship. If, well, it's not a hardship. If um, someone in your family was in a wheelchair mm -hmm. and you had to put a covered walkway, I would consider that a legitimate hardship. Like you know, like a carrying baby in the no. snow and rain. <laughs> they're, you're going, they're going right into the garage. <laughs> <laughs> there could be a bunch of baby stuff in there. <laughs> in the garage. So, so basically, in order to grant a variance, we need to find four findings. Mm -hmm. Okay, first one is very simple. Variance must be with respect to a particular piece of land, a parcel of land, or to be ex an existing building on that land, which it is. Mm -hmm. Number two is there must be circumstances related to the soil condition, shape, or topography, especially affecting such land or structure, but not affecting generally the zoning district in which it is located. So when you look at where your house is, right here, is are there anybody is there anybody else that does that has your particular lot that has that scenario? That well, scenario? You know, you know, the porch. Well, no. The fact that your lot has that long point right on this end here. No, that's my neighbor's lot. That's oh, that's your neighbor's that's number three. Oh, that's number three. I'm sorry. Who's home? He's doing a massive addition. I, I saw that. I'm just trying to keep up with the Joneses. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do it. No, I'm not. Run. I'm just trying to keep my wife happy. <laughs> it's staying in Yeah. Okay. You love the town. Love our neighborhood. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's that's what that one is. So, is there anybody else in your property or in that general zone that has a challenge similar to what you have? I suspect everybody, most builders build the house right up to the front setback, so everyone has a bigger rear yard. Well, the, and, and it's closer to the utility, it's closer to the right. road, less driveway, less, okay. There's reasons why right. they have front yard setbacks, and there's reasons most houses are sitting right there. And so everybody it's does the same thing. If you get a porch, right. everybody gets a porch. Okay. So, beautify the town, it's a third <laughs> the city. Okay. So the next one, literal enforcement of the ordinance would involve substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, to the petitioner or applicant. Uh, if we don't grant this, would yeah. be so. Our intention by doing this to, to this house, um, which we love, we, you know, we love East Hampton, we love our neighborhood, we even love our neighbors. Like it is just, it is the coolest neighborhood. 
So my wife and I made the decision uh, about a year ago that we have two choices. One, take a significant financial hardship and move to a bigger house, you know, which would cost a lot more money than to do what we're doing now. Uh, and move out of East Hampton, which we love so much, and we, we patronize all the restaurants and uh, everything else. Financial hardship. Um, you know, or do this, you know, make it our forever house where we're going to raise children and stay here till 2100. But that, to me, that's the same argument that anybody would make who has one front porch. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. It's the same as everybody. And granting a variant, you can't grant one to everybody. Well, we shouldn't grant them to everybody. Yeah. Right. I agree. There's no point in having a rule if you just ignore it. I can, yeah, I appreciate that for sure. Um, yeah, I just wish one of those things where I really wish my house was built a little further back. <laughs> or the city hadn't rezoned your property. That's what yeah, the problem really, is. Yeah. Well, and, and, and that was my that was my first question. Okay, and I said, okay, so if the town hadn't rezoned the property, and it was still in an R15 as it was in 19. 93 when those subdivisions put in. Mm -hmm. I said, what was the front yard setback? The original front yard setback was 30 feet. Mm. Oh, so it doesn't even comply. <laughs> it doesn't even comply that. Which, <laughs> and, and that was kind of my, well, okay. Because I, I said, okay, what is, what are our, if, if we were still yeah. doing the time warp, we were back 25 so years ago, what would we be in a position where we wouldn't have to be granting a variance? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> but we're a whole lot closer than we are. And I think, and I would be probably close in saying this, but the, the other houses on Apple Tree Lane probably have less than that. See, I just before I came here, I drove through there. Mm -hmm. And I might disagree with that, other than your neighbor with that massive addition. Huge. That doesn't look like it's 50 feet back, but I'm not the building official, <laughs> so that's not my problem. Um, but I would, I would say the others are third. Okay. But in, I would, I can't disagree with you. I think the only difference is easy, that Apple Tree Lane is a curved street that comes around like this. Mm -hmm. And not, no two lots on that whole street are even remotely similar in mm -hmm. shape or size. No, they're not. It's so dramatically, it's not like a typical subdivision where it's like, you know, poster stamps, paint. paint right. Paint. And you go up Matthew or you go up any uh, Golden right. or any of these there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Metro Alliance, so yeah, you're right. Yeah. Every, I mean, every lot is so different, shape, size, and even the street to today's building code what I hear is non-conforming because it's so narrow. If you have cars on parked on each side of the street, you can almost never get by. So you can't park two cars. So it was just a very unique, I don't know what happened back in 93 or whatever, but it is really interesting. <laughs> but it creates characters. We're not going to go there, OK? <laughs> it creates characters, which we love. Yeah. Um, but we just have to deal with you know, some of the oddities around it. Okay. So. One of the things that the building commissioner and myself have been working on is to yeah. re try to get through city council a change to this section of the ordinance that deals with um, setbacks and waivers and things like that. And one of the proposals that was floated was that like you look at your neighbors, so where how far your neighbor's front is to your kind of, like it doesn't make sense if you're you have to be 50 feet back, but the neighbors on both sides are 30 feet back. And I don't know if this is the case with your property, but if it's, if your neighbors are significantly closer to the street. He does might, have a neighbor who's significantly closer to the street. Yeah, there might do. be something that in the future, yeah, when, when, the, when the, if they make that. When, if and when this is to get to passed by city council, oh, that you could that. look to that and apply at a later point in time. If, so this variance doesn't look like it's going to happen tonight. Yeah. Right. So yeah. the house that is your to your, if you're looking at your house, yeah. the house is on your right hand side. It's right in the hand, as you see. In our, the their frontage is on Plain Street. So in East, I've never thought about that. 
and Apple Tree Lane. They so have two, they, they the have two front yards. Yeah, two front yards and, the house and so they're supposed to be set back 30 feet on each if it was no, on no, R50. They should be, but they weren't part of the Apple Tree Lane subdivision, I don't think. Okay, I, don't I think so right. I they think were built in the 60s. Yeah. yeah, so I think, oh, so, so in that case, they, they would have the 30, R15, 30 feet. 30 and 30. 30 and 30. Uh, uh, 30 and 15. Well, no, depends. It's it two, depends. It's two fronts. Oh, well, it depends how the ordinance was written or read at the time. I was thinking about the other houses on Apple Tree. The only one that looked closer was the one that's under construction. The rest of them looked like they definitely had at least 30 feet. But I just drove through once. Well, it's, this has been here for okay. at least since 95. Okay. So before that, I don't know if there was a diagram, and it might have been considered a front and a side. And right, because you had to deem whichever road your house, whatever side your driveway came in on, was considered the front well, yard. Right. But now it would be considered two fronts, and more to the point, if this zoning amendment goes through, it would be, it's not about whether or not it's a front or a side, it's like, what would, how close is that structure to the So street? basically you'll go out and measure your neighbor's front for two or three houses on either side and that and that would be like so if everyone else is closer to the street then the idea would be that it doesn't make sense to arbitrarily say well you have to I don't have a problem with that but it's not I mean it's, it's yeah, still it's still in progress yeah and it hasn't gone to council and it could take well you can only afford one addition at the moment right you come back next year <laughs> <laughs> So, so I think that's that's really that's where it's looking. Is that the the, the back porch or the back addition? Yeah. We I think we can agree that is it all works. It's the front porch that currently yeah. the way the zoning is written it would require a variance. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's the hardship that is the question, and it's always been the question. And and you are not the first person to sit here and say, well, what is a hardship? <laughs> yeah. And and it would be great if we could say, here's the definition of hardship, and and you know you would fill. Yeah. You know, but uh, you know that that is, you know, financial or otherwise. Mm -hmm. So. So. Okay. So. Back addition, great room, approved. With yep. a caveat around the gazebo, the gazebo and the water best management practices, rain and garden, rain yep. garden, and then the porch. Sounds like at some point in the near future, I can come back and have a discussion around that. When, yeah. So, what would you make, like put like a very time range on, as soon as or as long as? <laughs> we've been we've been working on it for the last two years. Okay. <laughs> we had we had right. had Here. goals to get it to council every six months. Okay. Um, and but you never had a real applicant that might use it, have you? Um, there may have been, like the, your neighbor in number three could, might have benefited from it, but then he found another way to do what he wanted to do. I just built it bigger. Um, <laughs> Go on. Yeah, you did. I, mean, I think that's, that was yeah. yeah. Um, but it's just for various reasons we had changes in the planning director and then I was out for a while and then building commissioner and it's just been the it's been a cascading series of series. We're very close and we need to finalize the language to bring it to, to bring it to so if this happens in six months um, do I have to go through the whole the process around the 300 and, or 200 and whatever dollars to do the, the, ads I, the and idea, and the that idea stuff behind it is to make it very like there's no um, subjective to it, it's yes. like the building inspector can. The, the, the zoning says oh, if you meet yes, these requirements, yes. the building inspector can. So it'll just be a regular an amendment to the regulations. So you don't need to come before the board, right? So okay. it, so it'd be an administrative. So the idea is yeah. it'd be an administrative okay, thing, not a zoning board of appeals thing. Okay. So it wouldn't be that you need no, to I'm then. Just, if like so you need, you, you take yeah. these so measurements. It shouldn't and, be discretionary. Right. If yeah. and so the, the idea is to create the language so that way hmm. it's like. You do the math and it and it works, or you don't, or it doesn't, and then and that if it doesn't, then you could appeal it mm. to the zoning board of appeals, who could, mm. who could use a bit more of a subjective, like, yeah. okay, well, you're two feet, 
you know, yeah. or you know, and that there's some more leeway for the, the zoning board to then be that body that's not just dealing with a technical, right? Uh, does this, right. you know, meet the math or not? Okay. Okay. Um, a little bummed out, but I think it's a net positive meeting. <laughs> yeah. um, it, uh, is part of this meeting explaining to me the way forward from here? Yes. We have to make a motion. We're going to make a motion. We're going to vote on it, and then we're going to explain to you, <laughs> you know, All right. the bonus rent. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so I can go get my shovel tonight and start digging. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. So I guess would someone like to make a motion, or would you like me to write and read the motion? Um, can we just just go through the uh, eleven point one two? We don't have to do the twelve point seven, but just the like 11. affirmative findings 11. that point one two and thirteen point one. Uh, just the affirmative findings that. Okay, eleven it's point not one more two. A pre-existing non-conforming structure. Yeah. Yes. Okay, non-conforming. Uh, Non-conforming single or two-family residential structures may be extended, altered, or structurally changed upon a determination by the Building Commissioner. Oh, skip the B. If the Zoning Board finds that the proposed changes would not significantly intensify any existing non-conformities or create any new non-conformities, and that the proposed changes would not cause the structure to become substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conforming structure to the neighborhood, it shall grant a special permit for the proposed changes. So that's what we're saying in that you're currently 11 feet plus or minus off the side yard. You're gonna be within that 11, you're, you're gonna be greater than that 11 feet off the side yard. If you were going to be more non-conforming, hence closer to the side yard, mm -hmm. then we'd have a problem, we'd have to look at a variant, but you're gonna be plus or minus you know, within reason of that 11 feet. Correct. Okay. Yep. So that is the good part. Yep. Okay. I, I'll make a motion and you can do all the special permit thing because you're very good at that. So then we don't have to do the, the, Okay. The, we approve a 520 square foot addition to the rear of the house at one apple tree. Just, just because we're, we're approving this, <laughs> you're, you're doing the rear addition. You, I just want to... That we, that we found there's no new non-conformities being created by Correct. the rear addition. Right. It's not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. Correct. Because it's not. It's not going to. In, it's not going no to create any, any new non-conformities and or exceed. Uh, yeah. Existing than the existing non-conforming structure. Right. So it will not be more not. It will not more detrimental because. It's no closer to no the closer side to property the side. line in the existing house. Okay. okay. And then I want to just affirm the time that the front one, we are finding <coughs> that it is Close. more non-conforming. Yeah. It may or may not may or may not be more detrimental. But it will require a variance, and the, the variance yes. language is not. Met. So the current. So the, just the, the, thank you. The current setback on the front of the house is 28 feet. Yeah. The zoning requires a 50 foot front yard setback. The addition of a front porch would create a greater nonconformity, and thereby is not approved. Well, <laughs> At least you have a good sense of humor. <laughs> it's never the fun part, believe me. Well, I have good news to deliver to my wife. That's, uh, and just... subject to once the gazebo. Oh, yeah. Well, we, got, we haven't gotten to all okay. those conditions yet. Well, so let's. Okay. So let me know when you're ready for conditions. Wait. Ready. Okay. The addition to the rear of the property will then exceed the maximum building coverage of the lot. And the maximum impervious surface coverage. Okay. 
shape better than I do. You should see all the bread on there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, the um, mediation, we're, we're looking to implement a stormwater best management practice for the impervious surface coverage, including a rain garden. Rain garden. Gazebo oh. dies, it can't be replaced. Yes. The gazebo upon its demise. Demise. <laughs> I like that. that. That's great wording here. <laughs> On the demise of the gazebo. One giant snowstorm and she gone. <laughs> Next Seconds. All in favor? Go ahead. Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. So moves. Okay. okay. So here's what happens. Jamie's going to write this up mm -hmm. and then put my initials on it. Mm -hmm. When she emails it to me and says, "Yeah, that's <laughs> really what we said." Um, at that point, it gets stamped by the city clerk. Yep. There's a 20-day appeal period yes. at which, if any of your neighbors or anyone decides that after watching this that we did not do something we're supposed to do. Well, at that point, you will be notified. Mm -hmm. You'll come down here, pick it up, take it to the uh, Registry of Deeds, yep. put it in with your deed, it gets attached to your deed, and you are then thereby permitted to start. You will not be able to pull a permit until that point. Um, I thought when we were talking last month, there was yes. a discussion, because I'm on a, I'm on, I'm on a race, I'm racing against yes. the clock right now. So I understand. Is there, it sounded like there was a chance that I'd be there, able to there start There is, once the sooner. board's made their decision tonight, yes. you can, at your own risk, okay. start to do activities that, you know, go down this road. Yeah. But keeping in mind that if somebody appeals the decision, yeah. um, one of these <laughs> many people in the, the room that are yes. pitchforks yeah. and torches, yeah. um, that, that you could then find yourself in a situation where you've put significant money, started to build a foundation or something like that, well, and, that and then fast. you're on, on hold until the lawsuit gets resolved. Yeah. I would say the risk is low that anybody here is going to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the candidate. But, still, <laughs> but it yeah. is still at your own risk. I mean, if you, um, if and you, you already have a, a contractor lined up, yeah. and, and you know, he's chomping at the bit, mm -hmm. Explain the situation. It's more me than, than right. any of my contract. Um, right. The other thing is, you will still need building permits to do the work, yeah. and the building commissioner may grant a building permit without the written decision, sort of at your risk, sort of allow you to get started. Yeah. Okay. Um, the building commissioner may not. Terrible, okay. John. Yeah. yeah. Tomorrow's his last day here. Really? So. Where's he going? Uh, he's going to Northampton. Wow. So. You uh, go through building geez. officials. And I, I thought Thursday's not even in here. I thought he's. No, on. Friday, Friday is the. So he'll be here tomorrow. Today's only Wednesday. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I've done a lot so, of work with him over the past couple of years. Yeah, so that being the case, I don't know who the next building commissioner is and what they're oh my goodness. likely to so I'll be here first thing tomorrow morning. I would. <laughs> yeah, I would. I would um, <laughs> John's pretty good. Yeah, I, I love working with John. And yeah. so John will want to check in with me and I'll send him an email tonight just to let him yeah. know that. Um, so the building happened. commissioner of Northampton is that where he's going? Yeah. Oh, good for him. So. He's a Westfield before. Right? Yeah. 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 So north. Yeah. That's great. Um, good for him. Yeah. So the scoop for Northampton. Yeah, it's it's not, not great for us. Yeah. It might be. Who knows what the next will be. Yeah. Um, so that would be in your best interest to try to talk to him tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll be here. Um, 7.30 sharp. Yeah. Is that when he gets in 7.30? Uh, I, I don't know. He's, 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 he's always here when I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, think, I think it's posted on the door. Yeah. His hours. Because he's, he's here. With his office hours, then he goes out and inspects everything yeah. and then comes yeah. back. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think he's usually here from like seven to ten ish or something like that. So Okay. So. All right. All right. All right.
Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, it was very nice meeting you guys. Well, it sounds like I'll see you in about six months or so. Yeah, if yeah, everything yeah. goes well. Yeah. So just keep checking in with me yeah. about that. And if Absolutely. you'd like to become active in town, we do have board openings available. <laughs> hey, how does it work? Basically, you do say, you hey, I'd like to be part of this board. Yeah. And you write a letter to the mayor. Write a letter to the mayor, and the mayor goes, yeah, right. Someone wants to be on a board. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, yeah. So, is, how, what's the hour commitment? Like a month? Uh, basically, what you just one, saw. Once a month. Okay. Yeah, so the meetings yeah. are scheduled once and a not, month. Yeah, and not every month because some months they don't some have. Some months right. they don't have applicants. Yeah, we had, I think, two or two yeah. months in a row. Yeah. 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 I think. Yeah, we haven't met since June. May. June. May. Oh, we have to do the minutes. Before yes. We oh. So. Um, yeah, so I think on average the board meets about six times a year. The last okay couple of years now mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the last big to... application was the brewery on Fort Hill Road several years ago oh, cool. that took multiple meetings there was oh, a that, controversy was over that but other than that most of them were like your application it gets yeah. done in the night yeah and we you know, or as day. you can see we're we're pretty okay <laughs> what do you want to do we try, we try. We, we try. try to help the applicant you know, yeah. You know. yeah we try to look at it in a reasonable Sense. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate it. And I'm yeah. sure there's a lot of you know zoning board of appeal towns out there that probably aren't as so accommodating. So mm -hmm. I, I really appreciate uh, yeah. appreciate the time and you know hearing my Good. my thoughts. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So. All right. Well, we're going to continue with our meeting here because we have minutes to approve. That's yes. it. Okay. A couple of minutes. I read the minutes, so I'll make a motion to Thank approve you. the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that, this was Ellen Heffernan on Chapman Road. Remember her in the yeah. kitchen? Yes. Or yes. The breezeway? Yes, yes. Yes. I'll second. The 10 minute minute. Okay. Uh, second. All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Sold. All right. Okay. Great. Motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. We adjourn. Thank you. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll approve. Aye. Thanks so much, guys. All right. Thank you, you very much. Very nice meeting you. Yep. See you guys. Thank you. Thank you.